Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain some of the different types of cutting tools that can be used for milling purposes, when is best to use these tools, and how we go about using them inside of Fusion 360. Now in front of me here, I've got two of the more commonly used milling tools. Now there are lots of different types of cutting tools, but generally speaking, these are two of the more widely used types. First of all, I've got a flat end mill, which as we can see, gets its name from having a flat bottom all the way across, which then comes at 90 degrees onto our sides. I also have a ball nose mill, which instead has a radius or a hemisphere or half of a ball, which is where it gets its name from, to give it a rounded end instead. Now there is a type of tool that lies somewhere in between these two, which can be called a bull nose mill or a tip radius end mill, which has a partly flat bottom with a radius just around the edges. And to keep things simple, we'll just focus on our flat end mill and our bull nose mill for today. So why would we use one of these types of tools over another? It really comes down to a combination of the type of geometry that we're trying to machine and the stage of the process that we're at. If we look at our flat end mill, for example, when we cut away material using this, we're going to be left with stock that has a flat bottom and straight sided walls to match the geometry of the tool. This is perfect if the geometry that we're trying to machine has a flat bottom and straight sided walls. And in this case, it means that we can use a flat end mill to finish our parts to final form. However, many parts have more complex curved surfaces. And for these, a flat end mill is not ideal to use. This is where we now move on to our bull nose mill. If we use this tool to cut through the material, Again, we will be left with stock that has the geometry of the tool, i.e. the radius or the half ball on the end. As you can see, when we have multiple passes using the ball nose mill, we are left with material in between these, which are called cusps. We can reduce the size of these cusps by reducing the size of the step over or the passes but this is a very inefficient way of machining a flat surface like this. And instead, we'd be much better off using a flat end mill to quickly clear that material and give us this flat surface. Where a ball nose mill does give us an advantage is when we want to machine a curved surface. If we tried using a flat end mill to machine a curved surface, we end up with steps, which are similar to the cusps created with the ball nose, However, on a curved surface like this, it takes much fewer passes with a ball nose mill to reduce these cusps to an acceptable size than it would with a flat end mill. Because of this, flat end mills are generally used for roughing when we want to clear the majority of the material away quickly, whereas ball nose mills are then used for finishing to clean up what the roughing passes have left behind. The exception to this is obviously when we have a flat surface to finish, we can use a flat end mill as the geometry of this tool matches the final form of the finished part. Another choice that can be made with how we cut with our milling tools is whether to use what are called climb or conventional cutting. These are to do with how the tool rotates in relation to the feed direction and the material that they are cutting away. Climb cutting rotates the tool so that the teeth are digging into the material and the chips are pushed behind the tool as it moves forward. The way that the teeth dig in mean that the tool pulls itself along the material or climbs. Conventional cutting is the opposite direction where the chips of material are pushed in front of the tool as it moves along. Now, there are a number of factors that would determine which is the best method for a particular application, and that is a whole topic within itself. But generally speaking, 
climb cutting is preferred as it leads to lower tool wear and better quality surface finish. So now that we know a bit more about these tools and when we use them, let's have a look at how we use them inside of Fusion 360. In the manufacturing workspace of Fusion 360, we have the tool library, which is where we can create and store the cutting tools that we are going to use for a particular job or perhaps that are always available on a particular machine. In this document, we can see there is already a flat end mill and I can create new tools to add in. Here we see all of the different types of tools that can be created, including the types we have discussed, as well as many other types, both for milling and other manufacturing applications. To create a new tool, I simply need to select the type I want I will use a ball end mill, and now I can fill out all of the necessary information to define this tool. Here we can see a tool path for machining this fillet, which is currently using a flat end mill. But as we've already seen, a ball end mill would work much better for this type of surface. If I edit this operation, in the tool tab, I can now select a new tool from my tool library. Another change I can make to this operation is in the passes tab, where I can select the direction of cut. This is where I can choose whether the cuts will be climb, conventional, or allow for it to be both ways. There are similar options for many of the other operation types. I'll leave this one as climb. That concludes this quick intro to milling tool types. Thanks for watching.